everyone, thanks for watching. We're going to cover Article 625 over the next couple of videos, which covers electric vehicle power transfer systems. Now, before we get into the changes in the 2023, I want to mention the, the title of Article 625. It was changed in the 2020 code, and it was kind of subtle. It used to say that this article covers electric vehicle charging systems. Well, now it says it covers electric vehicle power transfer systems because it can be bi-directional. We not only charge our electric vehicles, but we can also use our electric vehicles uh, to charge something else, right? It, whether we back up our house in the event of an emergency or if we back feed the grid. And, and that's something that a lot of people are saying is probably going to happen. We're going to get a whole neighborhood for, full of electric vehicles and when they all plug them in overnight, maybe we can kind of take trickle charges from the vehicles back and forth and, and get paid for it. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens in Article 625 over the next few years. Now, it doesn't matter if you love electric vehicles or you hate electric vehicles. I, I, I really don't care. <laughs> you know, buy one or don't buy one. I, I don't care. Uh, but here's the thing. Whether you love them or hate them, as electricians, we have to know the rules. So a lot of things are happening in, in Article 625. Obviously, a big concern is whether or not our grid, our infrastructure, can really support massive amounts of electric vehicle power transfer systems. You know, already we're seeing rolling brownouts occurring in, in California, and of course in Texas they're on their own power grid, and it seems like if it snows they're suddenly out of power. So how are they going to handle electric vehicles? Well, I think there's innovative solutions to this. Uh, we're going to see a lot more energy management systems and energy storage. So remember, it, it it's not the same way that our, that our grandparents did it. We, we don't just plug in and go off the grid and, and there you go. It, it's obviously much, much more complex. So people are looking at electric vehicles as an issue and, and kind of treating it like we would have a hundred years ago, saying, well, we're gonna add all this load, how is the grid gonna take it? Well, we are adding a lot of load, no question, but we're also adding energy storage and we're adding energy management and we're getting innovative ways to handle all of this. So I think we're gonna be fine, but there are a lot of people that are really freaking out. So let's take a look at what the 2023 code did. There's some things that were made specifically to address the capacity of the grid and the capacity of the infrastructure. The first change is in Article 625, Section 40, Individual Branch Circuit, so we'll start with that one. 625.40, Individual Branch Circuit, the circuiting requirements for electric vehicle supply equipment were lessened. EVSE, Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment, that's an acronym that we use all through the code, so if you're not familiar with it, uh, EVSE. Any EVSE, electric vehicle supply equipment, exceeding 16 amps or 120 volts must be supplied by an individual branch circuit. All right. The code used to simply say, look, if you have electric vehicle supply equipment, it's got to be on its own circuit. Okay, well, I mean, this thing here in the photograph, this is a really slow charger for a, for a car and it really doesn't pull much power. It's 120 volts. Now, you're not going to plug this thing in and, and drive across the country the next day. It, it's a very slow process. It's a trickle charger. But if it doesn't pull 16 amps and it's only 120 volts, why should it have its own circuit? You know, if you want to put it on its own circuit, fine. But the National Electrical Code shouldn't be forcing me to put it on its own circuit if there's no reason for that. So some nice relief that was added here. Now, the real issue here and, and what, I, what I want to talk about is the exception that was added. A branch circuit can serve multiple, <laughs> multiple? What is multiple? A branch circuit can serve multiple electric vehicle supply equipment if an energy management system is used or if the EVSE has adjustable settings as described in 625.42. And we're going to talk about those in the next video, which of course covers 625.42. But suffice it to say, the general rule is if you have an electric vehicle charger, electric vehicle supply equipment, it has to be on its own circuit unless it's 120 volts and 16 amps or less. All right, then you can put it on a circuit with something else. So here we're saying, yeah, go ahead and put multiple electric vehicle supply equipment on. If you use an energy management system, which is what we're showing, or if you can tweak the settings on 
the electric vehicle supply equipment. That is going to make sense in the next video because that's the whole subject of the next one, 625.42, which is energy management systems and adjustable settings. So I hope to see you on the next video and we'll kind of tie this all together.